Here he is, the sadly assassinated Prince Mihailo Obrenovic, the founder, in many ways, of modern Serbian culture. It was his vision that Belgrade could be a great cosmopolitan city, and it was he who sought to introduce his subjects to the riches of European culture. 1922, the year in which the kingdoms were united to form the kingdom of Yugoslavia, an event celebrated by the placing on the facade of the Opera House of two great flaming torches symbolizing the new kingdom. An essential element in Serbian music are the singing societies. These are public choirs that exist in every area of Serbian society and they bring people together of all ages and abilities simply to sing. They don't necessarily perform or even worry too much about having the right voices. It's just all about the shared experience of singing. It creates a tremendous unity through song. And of course, that vital reconnection with the musical heritage that Mokran Yach has made possible. This bust is of Mokranjac at the end of his life, when he was the doyen of Serbian music. As a young man, however, he started to be a mathematician, although he'd always loved music, and joined as a student the Belgrade Choral Society, a remarkable organization, an organization which in some ways helped to transform Serbia's cultural life, both musically and in literary ways, and there were connections with painters as well, and they were always on the lookout for new musical talent, and they sponsored Mokranjac to study in Munich, in Leipzig, and later in Rome. And when he came back to Serbia after these studies, he was armed to write a kind of music that Serbia had never experienced, and providing music of much greater complexity, much greater rigor and richness. In the and he brought the Belgrade Choral Society to the absolute heights of musical expression. It became a world-famous chorus. And astonishingly, he took them on tour to places as remote as Constantinople, St. Petersburg, down to Dubrovnik, and right across to Berlin, where they sang for Kaiser Wilhelm II. He founded the Serbian Music School, always continuing to train his chorus to ever greater heights. Not surprisingly, he exhausted himself and fell very seriously ill and then at the age of 58 died only three weeks after the declaration of the First World War in 1914. His works are sung today in Moscow as performed by the Anima Vocal Ensemble. The most important thing in Mokranja's music is that Serbian people basically have preserved their national music, their folk music that from 14th to 19th century that was the only way to uh, use it and remember it and passing it from father to the son. So what he did, he preserved the folk songs of Serbian people in his pieces today and basically that is here to stay and pass on to the future generations. That's how things were when this hotel was built in 1936. Belgrade was part of the international glamour circuit. Then things changed. There were wars, there was communism. I came here 30 years ago and I can tell you it was not a happy place to be. But now it is. Belgrade has become again a great cosmopolitan center. A place filled with delight, art, architecture, music. I recommend it. If you missed part of this episode or you'd like to watch it again, you can view entire programs at sbs.com.au and the DVD and CD of Series 1 of Classical Destinations are available now at Dimmicks and JD Hi-Fi, while the Series 2 companion book is available at Dimmicks.